Okay, so now we're going to look at how to create landforms from point clouds. It's not a very uh, long video tutorial for this one, but it's not to say that the process is really any easier or quicker. Um, getting these point clouds is actually kind of a tedious process, but for the purposes of the video is that it's a little difficult to show how you actually acquire this point data. This image you see here, this was actually uh, created by using a drone uh, flying over a landscape and collecting all that point cloud data. Um, I'll also show you later on in the video how you can even use uh, the Xbox Connect to scan a uh, landform model that you may have created to also create some landforms. So this is basically just looking at a variety of uh, methods using point clouds and you'll see that when I'm kind of looking at this model it looks like it's a just a solid model of topography but when I start to zoom in you'll see that it's a, just a really dense collection of points and it's really accurate you'll see that this is of a BMX park and um, this isn't the highest resolution but when we're doing a workshop on this you can actually start to get the the tire tracks as part of the model, it gets really detailed, which is great. It's obviously one of the more kind of robust ways to create a landform, but it's also very limiting of either having a drone uh, to scan it or having a set of LiDAR points. That's all kind of contingent on its availability. But for this, we'll show you if you were to happen to get that. And we might show a video later on and more advanced way of uh, that whole workflow process of using a drone. But for this, what's great is again, Grasshopper has a plugin that allows you to take point clouds and create topography from it. Again, I'll provide a link at the bottom to show what that plugin is. But in this model, we can see that if I select it, I've pretty much just got the ground points isolated versus the trees and some of the other kind of artifacts on the site. But we'll be able to take even just this point cloud and create a landform that actually not only stitches it all together, but even retains all these colors that are part of the landscape. So it's not just a clay terrain, but it's actually a rendered uh, mesh terrain. So the plugin we'll use is called Volvox. This is specifically intended to take point clouds and uh, begin to edit them and create a mesh from them. So the first thing you would think that you could just use the point component. However, this one does require a specific component. So once you install it, it'll actually put in that component here, which is your cloud point. So I can select that and with that point cloud selected, I'll Go ahead and set one cloud. You'll see that it's not very visible. Um, it's Once I get a little bit further, you'll start to see how it gets represented. But now I'll go to the Volvox again. I'm gonna go to the engine and do the cloud engine to start to edit it a little. You'll see that this point cloud has 840,000 points. So depending on the computer you're using and how much processing power you want to dedicate to this, you might want to even consider reducing some of it. And so part of this plugin comes with that capability to reduce it. So if I go to uh, the cloud compare and do cloud subsampling, or sorry, not that one, we want to use the, uh, where is it? Sorry, it's in here, so random subsampling. I can drag that into there, and essentially you can say how much of a percent of the total points you want to reduce it. It reduces it by a default of 0.5. I'll again just use a number slider between 0 and 1, and I'll turn this off so you can actually start to see it. So this is actually the grasshopper cloud. I can't select it, it's actually there. If I turn this off, then it disappears. But this is what it looks like. It's pretty much identical to the Rhino point cloud. And you'll see as I begin to drag this over, the 
number of points decreases versus the original, which again, looks very dense and has a lot in it. So let's just stick with this original amount. And now we can uh, take this cloud and actually just create a colored mesh from it. So again, it's not even a very difficult, you can start to do other things such as create uh, some intersections to kind of create sections. Again, this is pretty robust, so I'm not going to mess too much with that. It's just about just creating that land, initial landform from it. And now I'll drag that into here. And you probably won't notice it right away because again, it's already a pretty dense set of points, so it's hard to see exactly what that looks like until I turn off the points and bake it. You'll see this takes a little bit just because it's using that original amount. Obviously, if I reduce it, it'll speed up that processing time, but let's just get this. Okay, so you can see that it even starts to kind of stitch some of these points over to the edge. So let's go ahead and turn this off, and this is what that colored mesh looks like, right? So if I turn it on, turn it off, it's still not physically there. So let's go ahead and bake it. And again, so now I've taken it from the, from the grasshopper interface into Rhino, so I can actually start to do stuff with it. But again, you can see it's all colored in and everything. Let's say you actually just want to use it as a clay model. So what's grid two is that I can take the points and clean it up so it actually just creates a mesh. So if I use the clean cloud, so this pretty much reduces all the colors. Let's turn that off. Now let's plug this one into there. And then again, it'll take a little bit of time, uh, not as much because we aren't using any colors, but I think what's good about seeing this clay uh, rendered terrain is that, like I said, you'll see a lot more of the intricate details that come out of this point cloud. So there we go. So again, it's five. I think it should have created it, right? So let's go ahead and bake it. Hopefully it's, yep, so there it is. And let's see what happens if I look at it as a shaded. You'll see that it's really just a really dense mesh from it. So it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if we can play with the display settings to help us out. Might be a little difficult to see. It's, usually this comes out a little bit better looking, but you can start to see just that triangulation from it. Let's just go to panels, display, change that to white to see it a little. Yeah, again, that curve just looks too much. Let's try one more thing, see if I can change the display settings and render it. So let's go to view, display modes, rendered. Let's try sh turning off curves. I hope there's a thing where I can turn off mesh curves. Surface, more and more. Nope, so it's still a little difficult to see, so 
Um, let's try one more thing for this. So I can actually take this cloud. Let's go ahead and actually maybe this will help. So I'm going to take this. I mean, for some reason, I can see that here is one of the original meshes we made from it. So let's take a look at that. Maybe that we can see it a little bit better. There we go. So like I said, you can really start to see some of the details of that track. That's a little bit more difficult to see once you have that texture. So, um, and I believe this is a mesh. Yep. Um, but it's just a little bit easier. I think we might have just done the standard mesh from points. Because uh, you can take this cloud of points. Let's make a copy of it by holding Alt. All right, so there's still two. We can explode it. So basically just create a bunch of points. Again, it's a lot of points. So let's try this. All right, so I had them all selected. It's going to take a while since it's almost a million of them. Now let's go to mesh, and it's the same process where we're just going to create a Delaney mesh from points. probably been better to turn off those points just to help with the processing power of this. All right, it looks like it finally made it because I can see that. Preview. Go ahead and bake it. Sure, let's put on the mesh layer. It looks like that's much easier to see. And it should pretty much look identical to that existing clay mesh model. Yep, so there you go. So yeah, if you use just the standard kind of grasshopper plugins by exploding that cloud point into just all their individual points and use the Delaney mesh component, you can start to create um, landform that way. So the next thing I'll show you real quick is, again, not much different than what we've seen before of creating a surface from points. This is, again, a point cloud created from the Xbox Connect. So what's great is you can use some other plugins to actually connect them, which we'll show in some more advanced tutorials. But ultimately, you get another cloud of points. We can reference all those points and do something very similar. So before, it's again not doesn't require a lot of effort and scripting, but it is another option where you want to maybe create your own uh, surface through some type of malleable surface. So we've used kinetic sand, we've used just standard kind of play sand to create that um, similar idea where the more points the more kind of detail it could show that could be an issue versus if you want to kind of reduce that amount of points so what's great is i can take this mesh and i can actually reduce it inside as well to kind of hopefully uh smooth it out um but i'll show that in another video so again 
not a lot going on, but um, it's another alternative to create these surfaces.